This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in San Diego County today, joined by Colin Parent. He is a new member of the La Mesa City Council. And you're on the other side now. You've worked in politics for quite a while. How is it being now the elected? Yeah, well, it's it's definitely a change of pace. Um, yeah, I'm used to uh, spending time on the other side right. of the dais, talking to elected officials, trying to get them to do the right thing. Right. And now, now I have the responsibility to do the right thing myself. What made you decide to make the jump? I mean, I know this is a part-time council, so you still have your day job, but still, I mean, you made the jump. Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, one of the big, the way, big ways that I was thinking about this was, you know, I, I'm spending so much time working in public policy, mm -hmm. trying to um, trying to make sure that we have a more affordable region. Right, uh, and sure we'll that talk we about good, that, of course. Yeah, make sure that we have right transportation choices. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that running for office and serving in that capacity would help me build on that kind of um, that kind of work to make sure that I was uh, having the most impact that I could have. Let's talk about the region, the San Diego region, even California. What we know is that when we talk about housing that is affordable not affordable housing, which is a term of art, uh, we're not doing so well in housing that is affordable. Our average home price is about two and a half times greater than the national average. And that's all of California. If yeah. you consider coastal California, forget it. I mean, our average home price is just astronomically greater. What do you see in La Mesa and San Diego and throughout California? Yeah, so, you know, in La Mesa, when I was uh, going door to door talking to people in the election, I'm, I mostly met two kinds of people. People mm -hmm. who they moved out to La Mesa mm -hmm. or their family moved out because it was more affordable. Right. Um, and I also met people who were planning to leave La Mesa because it was no longer affordable <laughs> for them. Right? It's remarkable how we see this mismatch. Yeah. We're building housing, not necessarily enough. We need to build probably another 100,000 a year. We're building about 100,000 a year. This is statewide. But yet we can't seem to get that mix right of, of all income levels. Yeah, that's right. And we do, uh, what we're, the primary problem for housing in California and La Mesa as well is, mm -hmm. is the supply and demand issue. We don't have enough homes for, for the people who want them. And so what happens is the price goes up. Right. And that, that's a big part of that is the, the market rate segment, right? So if you want to rent a house or buy a home, uh, you have to, um, there just aren't enough of them to go around. And so the, the price goes up. But then you also have that same the same problem for people who um, who really are never going to afford a, a place on the on the market. People who are low income, right? There there also isn't enough uh, aren't, aren't enough homes being created for the low income. And I want to talk about affordable housing in a moment, but I do want to get back to this concept of housing that is affordable, workforce housing. I, it, it's I'm flummoxed by it because we really just can't seem to get that mix correct. And I'm wondering, you know, what can be done on a city level, La Mesa, San Diego, a county level, San Diego County, or a state level? I mean, at a certain level, this is market rate housing, so the market dictates, but can policies be put in place so we can uh, improve the mix? Yeah, there absolutely can be. And one of the, one of the things that we have to do is we have to try to be more modest about the policies that we already have in place. Hmm. So the reason that we can't build as many homes as we need is it, it was we make it really difficult and expensive to build right. those homes. So uh, we in La Mesa ha are pursuing an affordable homes bonus program. Where we're uh, going to, and this is basically implementing an existing state law sure. that we haven't implemented yet where you allow uh, developers to build modestly larger developments than they're currently allowed to if they give back sure. a few units that are regi that are uh, set aside as affordable for lower-income people. But what about housing that is affordable, not affordable housing? Well, so this, is, this, this does both, right? Okay. So you make sure that if you're, gonna, if you're a market rate developer and you're gonna build um, a 20-unit project, you'll be able to build maybe a 24 units instead if you give a couple of them back as, um, but, as affordable. So let's go to the affordable housing element, because I do think it's kind of an interesting dynamic. Uh, my parents, they're getting older, they bought a condominium, this is in Los Angeles County, and what happened in that development is what I think what you described, where the developer was allowed to build a little more, but they gave back four affordable units. Yeah. It was by lottery. I right. mean, the number of people that applied for that lottery was off the chart. And so when you see that you have four units being offered and the number of people applying are in the hundreds, something is, is amiss here. I mean, my parents, God bless them, didn't uh, apply for the lottery, but, but be that as it may, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Well, you're seeing, you're seeing these problems on both ends of that, uh, of that spectrum mm -hmm. where, where the, the middle income housing 
isn't, uh, there aren't, aren't enough of those and they end up driving up the prices. For the low income housing, there's no, um, they don't drive up the prices because the prices are capped, mm -hmm. right? But the, the effect is the same where you have a bunch of people, more people who want it than can, um, can access it and so they use uh, waiting lists or right. lotteries or those sorts of and, things. And you talked about the environment. I think you were hinting at the regulatory environment surrounding development. You know you worked in the Brown administration. I don't think you were there during this portion, but Governor Brown last summer had talked about, um, I guess, requiring localities to ease certain regulations as a way to improve the construction of affordable housing. And local governments balked. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if La Mesa specifically did, but I know that the League of California Cities was not happy. Right. And so... You know, here you have a state government that's trying to ease a regulatory burden. Cal Sacramento is constantly being hammered for being, you know, overregulated. Yeah. But then we have the push pull. Yeah. So the complaints about Sacramento are oftentimes correct that they create a bunch of regulatory burdens. Right. Uh, that make it difficult to do, you know, to start businesses or to or to mm. to develop homes. So that's true. But it's also true that um, that a lot of local governments create a lot of those barriers themselves. Right. So Sacramento sort of gives and takes on the, on those issues. So they make it really difficult on some of the uh, environmental regulations and some of the um, uh, some of those so those, those yeah. other building codes that sure. kind of thing, but they also recognize that there's some uh, there's some problems on the local end and they're trying to cut through that and say, "Hey locals, you guys can't be you guys can't be adding so, to these okay. to these words." So, okay. I hear you. Is there a way then in the wake of that deal collapsing and never really was a deal, but the, yeah. that proposal collapsing that League of California Cities or whomever it is gets together so that we can have a comprehensive solution surrounding affordable housing, housing that is affordable. We don't have redevelopment anymore. I mean, that's been a very yeah. difficult loss. Yeah. You were there during that elimination. I was there. I was there. Yeah. Yeah, it's I your was. fault. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so what, I mean, is that a solution, trying to get locals through the League of California Cities or otherwise to work with Sacramento to ease regulatory burdens overall? Yeah, and I, and, and I actually suggest to people that we shouldn't be looking at uh, for a silver bullet solution, a comprehensive solution. Right, I remember we, a, right. we actually need to be do we have to be looking at a variety of different um, choke points in the system mm -hmm. and, and and addressing those one by one. And each any of those that by themselves may not be may not be transformative, but if you do enough of them over time, then you're going to see a different regulatory environment. What about this notion of density and transit oriented density? You know, it's interesting. Some communities they hear about it and they can't wait. That this is perfect. We love it. Other communities, are you kidding? I never want that in my community. Yeah, absolutely. And that's and that's like the D word is is uh, really divisive mm -hmm. in, a, uh, in a lot of places. And 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 I understand I understand that, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people choose to live in a community, and they want to make sure that it, it stays the same as when they as they moved in there. And that's very. I think that's a that's a natural um, perspective. And in doing things where you're allowing people to live and work closer to right. transit. Um, doesn't always have to require giant towers right. next, next to those transit stops. We have a lot of places, uh, including La Mesa, where the, de where the development plans that are in place do allow for um, modestly more than what's there today. And so what is La Mesa saying? So, what, so, what, so I think what we need to be saying is we, gotta, we have to make it easier for people to build what's already contemplated in the plans. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I think, step one. I don't think we need to, we have to be doing that before we start re-examining you know, changing the, those plans themselves. Okay. His name is Colin Parrott. He is a new member of the La Mesa City Council in San Diego County, where we are today. My name is Brad Palmer. Thank you so much for joining us on Local Edition.